This week on a brand new launch for accountants, we're taking a look at my favorite practice ignition updates of the year, a big update to one of the most popular launches of 2020, and buckle up, we got fully automated time tracking. What do we want? No, no time sheets. Better tax, oh, really though, it's totally automated. You're, you're lame. lame, you're lame. I, I know, I know, but time is my most valuable asset. Whoa, it's just time tracking. Go oh, next thing, let's go, yep. Cloud apps are great, have totally redefined work, eliminated double entry through integrations, but the new world of work is busy. How many apps do you use today? I suspect in the past five years, that figure has at least doubled. So while integrations have kept everything in sync, it's simultaneously become more fragmented. There's a new type of tool that's setting out to solve this. We're gonna look at catalog here, but there's a number of these now. Their solution to having too many apps is to add another app. And I know when I first saw one of these about six months ago, but I'm getting there. Take a look and decide for yourself. So here's catalog, pretty cool design, right? Take a look at these little kind of preview tiles here. Gives you the ability to search across all of your different tools. Okay, cool. Align on goals. Don't want another place to track goals. Automate workflows. Mm -hmm. That, that, gets me excited. So what else? I think what you're always gonna run into with this type of tool is it's obviously only ever gonna be as good as the apps that it integrates with. So here we can see all the integrations they have right now. If you're on G Suite, they're gonna handle virtually all of your G Suite stack. They've got messaging covered, Slack and Teams, Salesforce, Dropbox, HubSpot, Zoom, DocuSign, Trello. A lot of the usual suspects, but I suspect for most people, this isn't gonna cover their entire stack. It shouldn't necessarily be like damning for catalog. This is how every integrator tool starts, but definitely impacts the utility you can get out of something like this if it only covers you know, half your stack, for example. What do you think? One more app to organize your apps? Does that make sense? Drop a comment down below. Check this one out over at catalog.com with a Q. UCalc, the eighth most popular launch we featured in 2020, is back with a big release, Logic Jumps. But first, what's a UCalc? It started as a little calculator builder. You could make your own custom widgets and embed them on your website to let clients calculate you know, pricing, for example, or really anything else. But this update really turns it into something more. Historically, it was a pretty basic calculator. You could actually do some pretty complex calculations with it, but its functionality was pretty simple. You've got a little designer, you drag and drop things onto your canvas, and then you build out the calculation logic that lives behind it. So here's an embedded example. Laminate flooring calculator. You put in meterage, how many square meters in a package, installation method, it's gonna calculate something. Now what this update enables now is logical branching or really having multiple pages. So see now there's a little one here with a line to a two. If you think about that calculator we just looked at, now you can design subsequent pages, but also define the logic that dictates when you get past to a specific page. So scroll down a bit further here. For example, here you're defining the criteria where it passes from page one to page two, but you'll see down here, you can have multiple paths through these pages. So it's gonna enable a much more complex workflow than it would have before. Pretty. Sweet. Now last year, I demoed how to create a calculator for the third round of stimulus checks. I threw it on a website and it was a handy way to try to optimize that third stimulus check. And you know what it cost me? $3 a month. Pretty great. Learn more about this one over at ucalc.pro. Get your right gear on. Here's a tool that automatically logs the apps you use, even in browser, throughout the day. Why might you want this? Let's say you just wanted to see how much time you spent in each app over the course of a month, right? That would be handy and a completely reasonable thing to do. Talkler will let you do that. Yes, I said Talkler. How much time did you spend in Twitter compared to your tax software? How about a specific client's QuickBooks? All perfectly legitimate data points. Okay, so your bright idea is to install a program on my computer that watches everything that I do? Yeah, no, that seems like a great idea. Very astute friend, but two things with Tockler. One, it's open source, and two, it runs totally offline. So from a data security standpoint, it's your data. It actually makes it a little bit harder if you work across several machines, but I've been running this one and it's genuinely interesting to see. Work today for me is a ton of jumping around between different things, but to see the cumulative time you're spending on those different things has been actually really interesting. So this one is free. Check it out over at the link in the video description below. Our friends at Practice Ignition have been 
busy this year. They just released a beefed up version of their Zapier integration, and I thought, let's cruise through their best updates of the year, shall we? So before we begin, what's a practice ignition? First of all, how do you not know what practice ignition is? Second of all, it's a way to build clients and build out workflows around your engagements, but you already knew that. So my five favorite PI updates of the year. Let's take a look. One, proposal templates. I don't know that there's been any single PI update that has saved me more time than this this year. Basically on the right-hand panel, you've got all these templates, boilerplate ones from PI, but better custom ones you can create yourself. Now, most of us do the same thing for a whole bunch of people. Now you can set up that same thing in whatever collection of services it is, whatever start date, end date that is. And with a single click of a button, it's gonna populate the entire proposal with all of those goodies for you. Massive time saver. What else? Change client payment methods. So rather than having to hop into the proposal itself and change it, now on the admin side, you can see their payment method, add one, change it, that sort of thing. Expanded Zapier support. Oh, you're speaking my language. So a whole bunch of new triggers, but also some new fields that come through as well. So rather than just a single trigger like they've had in the past when something was accepted, they've still got that, but now you can trigger when a proposal is saved as a draft, when it's moved to awaiting acceptance, when it's revoked, marked as lost, or archived. So that's great, but arguably maybe even better, there's now a bunch more fields that come through whenever that trigger fires. Makes it easier to pull helpful data from the proposal itself. If you've got something that happens downstream automatically, every time a proposal is accepted. Uh, save time by creating new services and editing existing services in the proposal editor. I cannot tell you how many times in the past I've had to leave the proposal editor, go create a service or modify a service and come back to a draft proposal and add it in. This is super handy. Now you don't have to leave the page where you're creating that proposal itself. And five, Tom Maxwell changed his Twitter profile picture from this to this. So keep up the good work, PI. If you aren't using PI yet, learn more at practiceignition.com. We've all experienced bad LinkedIn outreach. Don't even get me started. But that blaster's still around, so it must be doing something productive, right? Well, here's a guide from an agency that actually knows what they're doing. How to do LinkedIn outreach in 2021. It's a little ebook of case studies from Belkins to give you some fresh ideas on how you may glean something useful from this of a Right now, I need to hire several people, like hard to get people, and I hate to say it, but if I knew how to LinkedIn, it's probably where I would turn. To get your hands on this one, check out the link in the video description below, hand over your name and email, and you can get this one for free. Let's talk about meeting apps. There are so many of these things right now, and God bless the sales teams for these apps, because the only thing that feels less cool than having meetings in 2021 is then having an app to manage those meetings. Well, this one might've convinced me. It's called Range. And it isn't just a notepad that's piggybacking all your calendar appointments, reminding you to be a responsible adult, create agendas, assign takeaways. That's not it. I'll show you why this one has my attention. Stop having pointless meetings. Yeah, you got me. That was a bit of a slow ball over the plate. Right now, my team's trying to be more asynchronous, not needing to be in a place at a certain time. Range is pitching check-ins as asynchronous meetings, something more flexible than traditional check-ins, but short of a live meeting. And they're saying by leveraging check-ins better, you cut back the number of pointless meetings. And I get it. A lot of meetings are just status updates and you don't really need to do status updates in person. So maybe the path to less of those live meetings really is better check-ins. The other meeting apps I've seen, they're about agendas, about note-taking, that's all fine. There's a lot of ways to do that. Probably doesn't require its own tool. What Range has got me interested on is, is actually a different type of meeting, I think, an asynchronous meeting. So not a way to make your in-person meetings better, but a replacement for those in-person meetings altogether. What do you cost, Range? Free for 20 users, I don't believe you. There's gonna be some critical feature that's not in that version, right? I don't know, the paid tier says unlimited meetings. Maybe there's a cap on the number of meetings in the free plan or something. But I actually think this looks pretty cool. So if you've got a team, especially a remote team probably, trying to get away from those live meetings, I'd be interested to know your take on tools like this. Check this one out over at range.co. That's it for this week. Hey, ever thought about bringing a friend along for the launch fun? If you're signed up for our newsletter and refer one other person to the newsletter, I'm gonna send you a fanny pack. Kind of weird, right? That's it for this week. In the meantime, check out some of these other weekly updates. Talk about the Zoom that's happening on this gym. Whoa, whoa. No,
Gracias.